really troubling. I know many of you have read uh, our articles on Javier your Captain Javier your Ortiz. But one of the things that we found that was really insulting to us as a community, uh, when Javier, uh, back in 1974, we had something called the Consent Decree. The United States government found out that the city of Miami was discriminating against African Americans, females, and Latins at the time. Latins were not in the majority at the time. So what did they what they did was they came up with a formula and how they defined each officer. So the city was classified, the, the, the members work for the city, if you're they would classify you as black if you were black male. It didn't include females. If you were Latin, it included anyone who came from Cuban descent, Puerto Rican, Mexican, you were considered Latin. Anglo the same. Females, regardless of race, were all included in the same category. So the consent decree just ended in 2018. A lot of people don't do that, but it's, co it's complex to the community because when you say black, we understand on the department they're talking about black males, but to the outside you're like, hey, you have black females, you got black males, I'm confused. So as a police department, I think we need to do a better job, and that's only because of that federal consent decree. But you had Javier Ortiz who knew that the, the, the federal government stated uh, that, listen, you're having a problem with black males getting promoted, especially the lieutenant position. Right. You need to find some way to help increase the um, opportunity for them because these t past tests seem to have an adverse effect. So they created a new test in 2015, ISO Solutions, and they said, hey, we're going to go ahead and uh, give this test. Now, it's funny, the person who, gave, who helped promote the test and give the test, Dr. Eon Krauss, wrote an article that stated how that type of test has an adverse impact on black males, but they still gave the test. Javier Ortiz took the test and listed himself as a black male, hoping that, or trying to be funny to show that, hey, if I put myself as a black male, I have a better chance of becoming, be, uh, getting promoted. But the problem is that the federal government, when they were looking at the statistics, it throws the statistics off. So who was the number one black male on the 2015 test? Javier Ortiz. So Javier Ortiz, uh, I believe he was number 13. So when he lists himself as a black man, but when you look at his driver's license, you look at his um, application for the sergeant exam, the um, for hiring, when you, so it all said Hispanic, white male. But then you take the captain's exam, you take the lieutenant's exam, and you put yourself as a black male. Black non-Hispanic. Black non-Hispanic. So now you're skewing the statistics. Now the city and the federal government are trying to find the right way to, to solve these past discriminations, and here you are doing these things. Also, another thing that we have, the police chief has allowed Javier Ortiz to be the captain over units like Marine Patrol, Mounted, SWAT, special events, and it seems that whenever Javier is over a unit, those units have very limited blacks in them and black males, period. We had one black male that was in SWAT, the only black male, the most senior black male on the SWAT team, the only one. Javier Ortiz kicked him out. Mm -hmm. We had only two blacks in special events. Javier Ortiz kicked him out. We have blacks having problems in more. So when you look at all these special units that are under Javier Ortiz, he seems to have an adverse effect against blacks. We're not making, this is what people are telling us. We see it. So how can the chief and you've seen the stories in the past, how can you as the chief know that how this person is, you know, you put them over these high liability units. That shows poor judgment. And when we bring up these topic, when we bring this topic up to the chief, he won't address it. And if I may have one more, training. Before you go there, let me, let, let's still have your teach for okay. a second. So <laughs> when I go and I look at uh, his cases, I look at his, his internal affairs profile. And so, in the last uh, couple of years that he's been here as an officer through captain, he's had 42 complaints, 60 charges. So he had one as a, uh, one complaint as a as a officer, 27 complaints as a sergeant, which led to 40 charges. Six complaints as a sergeant, well, as a lieutenant that had seven charges. Eight complaints as a captain led to 12 charges. Why is that significant? Why is this? significant in this in the, the state of where we are if you look at what he does in front of the commission disrespect he had one of our commissioners uh, sitting next to a dog uh, they, they're at the, the commission fighting about uh, 
whether this guy's a, a, a military veteran or something. He is not equipped to be where he's at. We're not saying not make him be a police officer. Put him in communications. Put him in property. Put him somewhere where he doesn't pose this, this, this issue to us because he's over hostage negotiations, SWAT. These are high liability areas that affect you and I, canine. You know, we all know but what they did with dogs back in the day in our neighborhoods. So our concern to the chief was like, hey, just move him. And he refuses to move him. So when I think about leadership, I see a poor leader in Javier Ortiz, but also see a poor leader in Chief Kalina, because you're refusing to move him. Not because we have any personal vendetta against anyone. We're just saying, hey, not this guy right here in this specific position right here. If okay, so can you can you 